There is a living God and a living Christ at his right hand. We thank thee that our faith and confidence can be in him. We can have the Billy Graham understood instinctively the power of the media. He clearly saw the critical role new communication technologies could have in reaching those who might otherwise never hear the message of salvation. So when God provided opportunities to harness that power, he seized them immediately. Since 1950, Billy Graham has written the newspaper column, My Answer. It is carried today by newspapers across the country with a combined circulation of 5 million readers. Billy Graham made it clear many times that these are not his answers, but God's answers, revealed in the Bible. As the hour of decision touched so many lives on radio, God showed Billy that a new and even more powerful communications medium could bring the message of Christ into millions of homes across America on a flickering black and white screen. You don't have to teach a, a child to be bad. You teach a child to be good. The child will, will automatically lie. A child will automatically slap its mouth. And the Bible teaches that we have this thing down inside us. This is what Christ taught. This is what the Bible teaches from Genesis to Revelation, that we have a disease. And this is why Christ came that first Christmas. That's what Christmas is all about. That he came to save us from this disease. Because if this disease ran rampant in the world, it could destroy the human race. Uh, it's not a matter of what I believe. It's uh, what the Bible teaches. And the Bible teaches that premarital sex relations are wrong. Yeah, that's funny. To, to me, that would be like, uh, you know, like driving a car, you know, getting a driver's license without a learner's permit first. <laughs> Let's just, uh, let's just uh, see. Now, you know, we have to have rules to live by. And uh, what we're saying is we're going to play a baseball game without any rules. We're going to play a football game without any rules. We're going to live a life without any moral rules. Well, God has laid down certain rules and said, if you want the best of life and you want complete happiness and fulfillment, live by these rules. And one of those rules is that thou shalt not commit immorality. Ah, but wait a minute. But if you're, say you're dating a girl, right? Well, I, uh, I don't intend to date anyone. No, but I am. <laughs> Everybody has broken every commandment. Yes, sir. The Bible says if we break in one point, we're guilty of all. Oh, and then when Jesus came after Moses, he explained that the, that the Ten Commandments can be broken in your heart by thought and intent. So in that sense, we're all guilty, and that's the reason the Bible says that everybody's a sinner. Even Ed is a sinner. Comes as quite a surprise. Because all the way God was teaching Israel, all through the Old Testament, that there was one God, only one, that we're to serve and we're to worship. Right, and that doesn't seem to you as say, an egomaniacal position. On God's part, oh no, God is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny, when I look in the mirror in the morning, it's hard for me to believe that. <laughs> you know, in God's sight, you are beautiful. And in, in everyone, <laughs> because, uh, because God loves all of us, and he has the hands of our head numbered, he sees the sparrow fall, he's interested in every detail of your life, he made you like you are. He made you Woody Allen. And he expects you to live up uh, to a standard that he has made. And if you don't live up to it, then the Bible says you're falling short. And that's where you need God's help for redemption. I guess I'm just troubled by the fact that, that we have to put the seed of sin in a little baby. Why don't we relax and just walk? Well, it's not on yeah, this I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what the Bible teaches, not what I teach. Yeah, I, I understand. But you have to come by faith, uh, Phil. Uh, you, you'll never be able to reason it out. If you try to reason it out, you're sunk. Uh, really? Yes. You agree? Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you know, Phil, what you're trying to do and what we're trying to do is to develop a God like ourselves. We, we do not want the revelation of God. We do not want God to say, I'm a God of judgment. I will judge you and uh, so forth. We don't want that. We want to make God in our image so that we become guilty of idolatry, which is the worst of all sin. My basic message has not changed. The message of the fact that uh, the Bible is the authoritative word of God, the fact that Jesus Christ was virgin born, the fact that Jesus Christ died for our sins on the cross, the fact that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, the fact that he's coming again, and the fact that you need to repent and receive him as your savior, that hasn't changed. But. I do try to keep current, and I try to make my messages relevant by using things right out of the newspaper. 
What do you see your role as now, Dr. Gray? I'm going to continue to preach the gospel as long as God gives me breath. When I was asked to consider going into motion pictures in 1949 in California, that's what I told uh, those people at that time, and I've told everybody since then when a president has called and asked me to take a certain job or to do something, or somebody's asked me to run for an office, I've told them the same thing. And I would say it today as I said it then with even more authority. I intend to preach as long as I have the strength to do it. You must have had temptation. Of course. And the Bible says we're, we're tempted in all points like as Jesus was, except he was without sin. He never did yield to temptations. And uh, the Bible says that uh, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you can bear. I've been tempted, but not so strongly that I couldn't bear it if I turned it over to God. And I always pray, Lord, help me. And especially when I was younger, at my age now, it's, those temptations are not quite strong. <laughs> are you optimistic about the millennium? Oh, of course. I'm optimistic about the one because Jesus Christ, we believe the Messiah is going to be the millennium. And he's coming. He's coming. No doubt in your mind. No doubt in my mind. Not the slightest. But isn't it true that a hundred years ago, whoever was the Billy Graham, if there was a Billy Graham at that time, was saying the same thing? Probably. I think so. So this is in a frame of reference that we don't know when. And we don't know when. It may be 10,000 years from now. The Bible says a thousand years in God's sight is as good a day. And a day in God's sight may be a thousand years. We don't know. And I think God's frame of reference is different than ours. We're told to watch certain signs. And they're all listed in the 24th chapter of Matthew, and the 21st chapter of Luke, and so forth. And uh, they're all coming true right now. And for the first time in history, I think all of them are happening right now at the same time. The next room is 